In this video, we're going to talk about how to get started using Remotely Possible for your iPod or iPhone or iPod Touch. Once you've installed Remotely Possible, you'll launch it and see a screen similar to this. What's happening here is Remotely Possible is looking for computers on your Wi-Fi network that it can connect to. If it's unable to find any, you'll see a message similar to the following, which will tell you that you need to go to your PC and install the uh, required software on the PC side. So we'll exit out of that for now and go to the PC and get the software that we need. So the website you're going to want to go to is validbit.com forward slash remotely possible. From here, the first link on this page is a uh, will take you to the page where you can download the software for your PC. Uh, you want to choose the appropriate version, whether you're running 32-bit Windows or 64-bit Windows for your computer. In this case, we're running 32-bit Windows, so we'll click here to download the software. It's a zip file, so we're going to save it uh, to our downloads folder here. Actually, I'm going to save it to the, to the desktop to make it a little bit easier. So here's our, our new zip file that has the remotely possible software in it. If you open up the zip file, you'll see there's just a single executable in here. This program can be run from anywhere on your hard drive, but we recommend strongly that you choose a location to run it from and always run it from that same location. If you run it from one location and then move it, uh, you can see some unexpected behavior. So in this case, we'll just create a, uh, a folder um, at the root of our C drive to hold this. So here we are at the root of the C drive. I'm going to create a new folder called Remotely Possible. And there is where we'll copy our executable. Uh, so from here you can just double click on Remotely Possible to launch it. The first time you launch it you'll get a warning because it was downloaded from the internet or you may get a warning depending on what version of Windows you're running. You can uncheck the box to say always ask and you won't have this pop up anymore. When you run it you'll also get a prompt uh, depending on your version of Windows uh, letting you know that Windows Firewall is, is blocking the application. That's because Remotely Possible has to listen for incoming network traffic. So you'll want to allow traffic to um, to go to Remotely Possible. So we'll allow access here. The first time you run Remotely Possible, you'll be asked to provide a password. This is going to be a password that you specify on both the Windows PC and on your device so that the, um, the two know that they're allowed to talk to each other. So we're going to put in a password here. And now we're ready to go. What you see in this window here is a list of default applications that were uh, that Remotely Possible knows how to configure. Uh, we'll go into more detail on this in other videos, but um, this is a configurable list, but these are the ones that are, that are there out of the box. So, uh, back to the, to the device, we're going to launch Remotely Possible again. And this time you'll see that it found a computer. We'll click it to select it, tap it, and it's asking you what the password is. And this is going to be the same password that we just typed on the PC. Type that in, click done. And you'll see that we connected. Now notice when we connect, we get a list of applications here. This is the same list that's um, shown on the screen of applications that are configured to be controlled by Remotely Possible. So once we're at this screen, we can, we can launch any of these applications. So for instance, let's launch Windows Media Center. Once Media Center starts up, we have two ways to control, to control it. We have gestures mode and buttons mode. Let's go to gestures mode first. From here, we're in a mode that does not require you to even look at the device screen anymore. You simply move your, move, your, move your thumb or finger across the screen and you're given control of what's on the screen. The other mode that you have available for you to control um, remotely possible with is buttons mode. So going to buttons mode gives you uh, several screens of, of remote control type buttons. So we have play, next, stop, etc. We also have volume control and we also have a keyboard and numeric keypad available for you to use. So, for example, if we go to the uh, navigation buttons, we can actually go up and down on the media center menus and go into um, make a selection. And then from here, we can actually choose something and play it, for instance. And then we can use the play pause button to actually pause the music 
resume, or even change the volume. 